What is going on everybody? This video is going to spotlight a unique offensive approach that Dubby took at the Madden Challenge with the Green Bay Packers playbook where he primarily operated out of the gun tight offset tight end formation in which he schemed around this play Y out. Now as you can see these are the statistics from that play for him throughout the tournament going 20 for 26, 398 yards, one touchdown and two interceptions good for a little over a 99 QBR. Now the most interesting difference for me was his QBR against traditional two high looks versus that of one high looks. Now the two high looks primarily DB fire two press and Tampa two one high mainly cross three fire and he saw a little cover one from Joel and Kiv. Now I think the one high look QBR is a little skewed as he did perform well against it for the majority of the tournament aside from those two interceptions. Uh, both against Kiv, one of which where Kiv's safety made a good play on the skinny post, and then the other where he tried to thread the needle on the corner route, and where Kiv had flashback Josh Norman with 93 zone, who ended up jumping the route. Now the first example here is going to come early in his matchup against young Kiv in the group stages, right here, 3rd and 16, long down and distance situation. Now I'm sure most of you guys probably know how you know smart routed in routes and out routes on long down and distance situations are kind of broken pretty much no zones play them correctly and protect the sticks doesn't really work as intended and so people have a hard time defending uh, those long out breaking in breaking routes because of those deep zone defenders just don't play them well enough and that's going to be pretty much the case here on this speed out route by deandre hopkins so you're going to see but what i like that w does here is it's a lot of smoke and mirrors right on the right side he motions out adam thielen and you see this concept out of gun bunch a lot whenever people run stuff like bunch trail or curl flat you motion out that outside receiver and put them on an out route basically trying to suck down if they have cloud flat zones on the outside that out route is going to suck down the cloud flat and it's going to open up the corner route behind it so what does w do he motions out thielen and he has the concept you see thielen running the out route on the outside and you see the the flat zone kind of covering him and he's going to have the corner route being run by the A receiver behind it. But what this does is it signals to Kiv and says, okay, Kiv sees that motion and knows, oh, he's trying to suck down my cloud flat. He's going to run a corner behind it. So I need to be over there with my user. So Kiv, smartly, is over there covering that corner route being run by the A receiver. But the entire time, this play was never intended to go to the right side of the field. This play was always most likely intended to go to this smart routed speed out route being run by deandre hopkins now he looks kind of bracketed right there between the inside zone defender and the outside deep third but what you're going to see because the speed out route is so good at creating immediate separation on the cut he's going to cut to the outside dubby's actually going to throw it as deandre hopkins is still cutting throws a low point pass the inside receiver or the inside defender rather is not going to have a chance at making up that ground the deep third defender can't clamp down in time and Hopkins going to end up making the catch for a W first down. Now the second clip is going to be from his game against Joel. And you have to know how W was trying to run this play. Basically his most common setup uh, that he would go with was he would go with a corner route on the left side. He would go double drags over the middle of the field. So one crossing to the right, one crossing to the left. And then he'd have the backside skinny post. And now what this would create was basically once this drag crossed all the way to the left side, you see that kind of flat route, corner route concept developing. He would go ahead and read that on the back side. He'd have an underneath check down with the other drag and then the skinny post over the middle of the field in case that happened to be open. Now what Joel was doing in his matchup was running a lot of DB fire to press. And so what Joel said, okay, I'm going to man up this outside cornerback. I'm going to man him up on the inside slot receiver running that corner out essentially banking on the fact that his outside leverage is going to allow him to cover the corner route and then he would sink his nickel corner or his slot corner out into a hard flat essentially to cover up that drag route that's crossing from right to left then what he did was he had the middle linebacker over the middle of the field covering the other drag route that's crossing basically onto the the weak side of the formation and so all Joel needed to do was he has every single route accounted for. He has the corner route. He has the drag routes accounted for. He also has another hard flat out here uh, that's going to allow him to basically bracket the, dr the drag that's flashing from left to right. And he's going to be bracketed basically the entire time as you're going to see throughout the play. So 
Snap of the ball, you see the outside corner route being covered by the man-to-man -man defender. You see the A receiver crossing into that, fl that hard flat zone. The X receiver absolutely blanketed. He's going to have the middle linebacker over the middle bracketing him. And then once he crosses his face, he's going to have the outside flat zone defender bracketing him. So the only place Joel's user needed to be on this play was on the deep post route. Joel got caught up a little bit too much in the grit of the kind of defensive line offensive line mix trying to play a little too aggressively on those drag routes w realizes it and hits the skinny post behind it against that tampa 2 too deep style shell and goes ahead and picks up a big gain now fast forward a little bit to the fourth quarter in his matchup against joel and you're essentially going to see the same sequence from both the offense and the defense here now the only difference is going to be w goes with an out route on the left side to hopkins rather than the underneath drag but the principle remains the same and you're essentially going to see the same exact setup on defense from Joel. So you see the man-to-man -man assignment on the Y receiver breaking. You see the hard flat on the left side and Joel knows this time I need to get back to guard that skinny post and that's exactly what he does. Now the problem here is that Joel only has a three-man rush so Dubby's able to step up in the pocket and get time. So good pocket presence from Dubby and that skinny post is so skinny that against these two deep shells like the db fire two press basically if you're not over the top of it you're gonna be able to still fit that in so it looks like it's blanketed it looks like joel knows exactly what he needed to guard and he did he was out there most players wouldn't even risk throwing this but right here dubby knows if i go ahead and lob this and pass lead it down the field basically split right between the free safety and strong safety and nobody's going to be able to make a play on it joel as a human being can't react quick enough to that deshaun jackson splits the safeties and goes you know 75 yards for a touchdown there now switching back to his matchup with young kid for the last time here and you're going to see kid running this crossfire three deep shell type of blitz and Kiv was getting very aggressive with his safety, as you can see, uh, bringing his middle third safety down deep into the box, which really muddies up that read for that skinny post most of the time. Now right here, what you're going to see from Dubby, and really what you want to notice from that deep safety is you see him dropping back, but you see right here, he turns for a split second. He's already starting to turn back around, but you can see he's focused on that corner route he got distracted by the corner route and drifted a little bit to the left you see how he's on the left hash mark that's gonna allow dubby to go ahead and squeeze this skinny post in in a situation where most deep third safeties especially when they're starting that far up into the box are pretty much gonna sink back and be in perfect position to guard that deep post but because he got distracted for like a half a second ronnie lott got pulled to the left and Dubby was able to fit in that skinny post right in front of his face. Now skipping to literally two plays later in the game, you're going to see an identical setup on defense from Kiv and you're going to see the same read on offense from Dubby, except now Dubby ends up throwing an interception. So what you're going to see, notice that free safety now, he doesn't get distracted by the corner route. He no longer turns and drifts a little, he's no longer on that left hash, he's literally in the middle of the field doesn't get distracted backpedaling the entire time shifts a little bit to the left but he never completely changed his attention and his momentum to that corner route as you can see he's already starting to shift back into the middle of the field dubby literally makes the same read against the same defense that he just did two plays ago where he got 25 yards and this time he ends up throwing an interception ronnie lott cuts in front and makes the pick for kiv and really puts Kiv in a good situation to go ahead and you know take complete control of this game already up 14 looking to go up three possession so that's going to be it for this video guys i just wanted to make a video and highlight how dubby kind of used that gun tight offset tight end formation throughout the madden challenge where it, it was a formation that was really popular last year and kind of fell to the wayside this year my thinking is that i think it's really really good against you know two deep shells last year nickel blitz db fire two press slant zone two were all king and so tight offset tight end had its place in the meta. It has a lot of pretty good, you know, cover two beaters, PA seams, drive out, stuff like that. And then this year with the rise of crossfire, I think people kind of fell away from it. So I think it was pretty cool how Dubby pulled it out and performed pretty well with it at the Madden Challenge. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely comment. Let me know if there are any specific videos that you guys would like to see in the future. And until next time, guys, take it easy.